I can now say good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm sure you're looking at your watches, 1201. I am Freeman Rabowski, and I'm delighted to welcome you today. This is our Presidential Faculty and Staff Award Ceremony, recognizing the achievements of colleagues across the campus. Now please stand for the singing of the national anthem sung by the UMBC Camerata, directed by Stephen Caracciolo. First of all, give them a round of applause for just for looking so good, a round of applause. I'm telling them that they clean up really well. They really do. OK. Uh -huh. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars so proud of them. Major round of applause. Thank you very much. Very, very much. One more round of applause. They were so good. Round of applause. Yeah. As the choir is leaving, I want us to take one moment to reflect on the fact that today is uh, the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. King. I was a 17-year-old sophomore in college, and it was one of the most devastating days in American history. For those of you who uh, were there, you would know it reminded us of the devastating day when our president, John Kennedy, had been killed five years before. I want to know something. How many of you in the room had not even been born by 1968? Raise your hands. That is truly disgusting. I want you to know that, right? <laughs> if you were in the world, if you were in the world in, when, when this happened in April 1968, stand up. Let me see who you are. Thank God for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you look really good. I want you to know. <laughs> but I, I say that and I, I make it in the sense, a, a sense of jest because of two things. One, uh, UMBC represents Dr. King's dream. I can think of no other circumstance than this room or what we represent when I think about the dream that Dr. King had. So for just one moment, a moment of silence for our country, for our country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before moving on, let, let me remind us that nothing in our lives is more important than our families and our friends. And I'm going to ask the families and friends of our award recipients to please stand. Let's give them a round of applause. Please stand if you're family and friends. Very nice. Very, very nice. You know, I, I've, I've read that for years. It never occurred to me. Recipients, the rest of us are your friends, too. We met the friends who came from other places, right? <laughs> if you think about it, everybody could have stood because you know people in this audience. Uh, now, let me ask that our former presidential teaching and research professors, our past distinguished staff award winners, our, our previous Jacobic and Winch and Demarest awardees and past region honorees, would all of you please stand so we can applaud you? Please, wherever you are.
Very nice. Thank you. Our provost, Philip Rouse, and a number of our leaders are, were invited to be a part of an innovation leadership team at an alliance in Atlanta today. We are, we are very proud that they are there, showing that we're one of the best. And we're delighted that today one of our own, Vice Provost Pat McDermott, will be serving in that role. And so please welcome Vice Provost McDermott to the stage, please, to the lectern. Good afternoon. It gives me great pleasure to be here on behalf of the provost to honor the presidential faculty and staff award winners. I ask that each awardee stand as I read their introduction. The 2018-2021 presidential teaching professor is Dr. Nicole King, associate professor and chair of American studies. <laughs> no, you stand while I do this. <laughs> Dr. King's unique approach to teaching and learning creates informed, politically and culturally literate citizens by blending creative in-classroom work with community-engaged pedagogy in a way that helps our students develop a deeper understanding of the city of Baltimore and its residents. Dr. King has taught every required course in the American Studies major and redesigned quite a few. Her students praise her mentorship and invaluable to them in their personal education and professional development. They credit her teaching for influencing their wor world outlook and even their career paths. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating Dr. King. Thank you, Pat, who was my chair in the Department of American Studies when I started at UMBC. So thank you for this award. It is especially wonderful to be honored for my work teaching at UMBC because UMBC has exceptional students. In my decade at the university, I have had the great privilege to take students into Baltimore City to do various research projects working with local neighborhoods, from env environmental justice projects in Brooklyn and Curtis Bay, to projects on gentrification in the west side of downtown. And I want to mention two things that have supported this work at UMBC. The first is the downtown shuttle. As a carless resident of Baltimore City, a proud carless resident of Baltimore City, I take the shuttle to campus every day that I have come since 2014. And before that, I took the 35 bus. But we don't have to talk about that today, because today's about good things. Um, I could talk a lot about public transportation. Uh, the shuttle enables me to get to campus, but it also enables to get my students to the city. And that brings me to the second thing I wanted to talk about the new College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Science classroom in downtown Baltimore at the Lyon Brothers Building, where at 3.30 I will hop on the shuttle, get off at Pratt and MOK, and walk over to that classroom to teach my students and to work with them on projects about the history and culture of the Hollins Market neighborhood, where that classroom is located in southwest Baltimore. And you can check out at Hollins Market from, uh, from 6 to 11 p.m. on Friday. My students are working with neighborhood partners as part of the Neighborhood Lights program and the stories of Suibo. Um, they're also hosting uh, an event on Saturday, May 12th at the Lions Brothers Building. You're all invited. So the two most important things that I've learned doing this public humanities work at UMBC, and these are the, the same two things that I talked about on May 1st, 2015, when my college, the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, a wonderful college, organized a teach-in on the uprisings in Baltimore in 2015. And those two things are, number one, showing up matters. And number two, listening is essential to learning. So on this 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination, I want to quote his words that a riot is a language of the unheard, and to conclude by arguing that we must bring more voices into conversations at our public university today. And we must learn to better listen to one another, because that's truly what teaching and learning is about. Thank you.
Thank you. The recipient of the 2018-2021 Presidential Research Professor Award is Dr. James Franson, Professor of Physics. <laughs> Dr. Franson has been a trailblazer in quantum information throughout his career. His published groundbreaking research appears in textbooks the world over and provides the foundation for all current quantum communication systems. And he continues to inspire researchers around the globe through his major contributions to the field. Please join me in welcoming and honoring Dr. James Franson. Very nice. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm uh, very uh, honored to receive this award. And uh, unfortunately, it's not quite as um, exciting or prestigious as being on the basketball team <laughs> and going to the NCAA tournament. Uh, but research itself is exciting in its own way, and uh, UMBC is a great place to do research. Uh, I hope that this award might help to uh, make our research more uh, better known around campus. So I'd like to thank uh, Mike Hayden for nominating me, and I'd like to thank my wife, Leslie, for all the support. Thank you. Mr. Joe Kirby, Assistant Vice President of the Division of Information Technology, is the recipient of the 2018-2019 Presidential Distingu Distinguished Staff Award for Professional Staff. Mr. Kirby's technical expertise, exemplary management style, and focus on supporting the campus community have led to the implementation of many high-profile technology solutions on our campus. And those solutions have saved UMBC hundreds of thousands of dollars. Under his leadership, UMBC's Division of Information Technology has improved many of our business processes and addresses everything from data privacy and security concerns to faculty, staff, and student technology support. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating Joe Kirby. Thank you very much. Um, it was both a surprise and an honor to get this award. Um, like the Academy Awards, I would like to just take a moment and thank those who really made this possible for me. Uh -huh. um, first of all, my God, for all the blessings that he's bestowed upon me. My mom for instilling a good work ethic. My wife for an unwavering support, encouragement, and patience. UMBC leadership for unbelievable support from the president down. Greg Bean for giving me the opportunity and mentoring me in my first 10 years. Jack Seuss for challenging me to be more than I would have thought possible, yet always promoting work-life balance and compassion over our 20 plus years together. My team, like many at UMBC, I am blessed with a wonderful staff. While it is difficult to not mention each and every one of them, I would like to recognize two in particular that have stood out as my anchors over the years. Kevin Joseph, my very first full-time hire in 1986, and now Director of Business Intelligence for Do It. Todd Hadaway, one of my first student interns in 1987, and now Director of Enterprise Database Identity and Access Management. Last but not least, the UMBC community. My success is so tied to the collaboration and cooperation I receive from our faculty, staff, and students. Thank you very much. The recipient of the 2018-2019 Presidential Distinguished Staff Award for non-exempt staff is Ms. Tamara Brown, Executive Administrative Assistant for the Office of the Dean of the College of Natural and Ma um, ooh, Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. <laughs> yes, <Scott. laughs> Congratulations, Bill. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be invited to do this again, and that's the win. <laughs> that's the win on this. <laughs> Ms. Brown is dedicated to serving the campus and its partners with the utmost exceptionalism. Her extensive knowledge and mastery of administrative processes and procedures 
has been instrumental in supporting the academic functions across the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. Ms. Brown is praised for her leadership and guidance, coordinating all aspects of the promotion and tenure process, consistently helping faculty across the college navigate this complex and often st stressful procedure. She also contributes to the work of the entire institution with her generosity and expertise. Please join me in welcoming and honoring Ms. Tamar Brown. I just want to thank everyone. I was pleased, honored, and humbled to receive this award. Um, I'm grateful for the recognition, and I want to thank Dr. Casper and the entire dean's office for nominating me, and everyone who supported my nomination along the way. Finally, I want to thank my family who have put up with my late hours at UMBC. <laughs> thank you. Please join me again in congratulating the Presidential Faculty Staff Award winners. <laughs> Dr. Amy Freud, Professor of History, is the recipient of the 2018 USM Board of Regents Faculty Award for Excellence in Teaching. Dr. Freud's innovative and interdisciplinary courses instill in her students the excitement of historical discovery, and her multifaceted lessons epitomize the distinctive undergraduate experience at UMBC. She is known for her creative writing assignments that engage students in new ways. She was the founding director of the interdisciplinary minor in entrepreneurship and innovation and many of her students have gone on to competitive PhD programs and have won prestigious awards. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating Dr. Amy Freud. Got a rowdy group out here. Thank you very much. Um, it's pretty humbling to win a Teaching Excellence Award at this university. Um, <laughs> um, I come from a, a department, uh, the Department of History, of uh, fabulous teachers, um, a college, the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, uh, <laughs> that, that is also full of teachers that um, inspire me, that, uh, that I learn from every day, and from whom I shamelessly steal good ideas uh, uh, all the time. So um, I, I feel like, you know, I'm just one of many who uh, are part of the, the teaching excellence that uh, I think um, is part of UMBC. Um, however, I can't help but be pleased to win something that means so much to me. Um, I've wanted to be a teacher since I was probably five years old. <laughs> um, and Well, except for a brief fascination with archaeology, but my family pointed out I hated dirt, so I thought <laughs> teaching would, would, would be a little bit easier, maybe. Um, you know, I loved school, I thought teachers were glamorous, fascinating, you know, I was a little bit off the mark there, I guess, but, but um, I, I wasn't off in terms of settling on a career that brings so much satisfaction, I, I think. Um, as a first generation college student, I thought that I would be a high school social studies teacher. That was a lofty enough goal for me, um, and I did pursue a teaching degree, and I went into the classroom where I learned, sadly, you don't get to spend a lot of time teaching. Um, that was, that was a, a disappointment. But at the same time, my undergraduate advisor sat me down and they said they thought I should pursue a PhD. And it's really to them that, that I have to look and say, you know, I'm here today because they were the ones who said, this is something you can do. Um, so I got a PhD, I, be, I became a professor, luckily enough, um, and I think that I feel like it's my job to, to kind of pay it forward, to, to do for those that, that was done for me. Um, and so my UMBC students, those, those diamond in the rough students, you know, that maybe don't know how good they are, that maybe need a little extra help, um, my graduate students who, um, you know, come here, pursue MAs, and then go on to PhDs and, and prestigious programs, it means so much to me to, to work with them. Uh, it's, it's really uh, giving to me as much as it is giving to them. Um, 
But I think I want to dedicate this award to all teachers, um, especially at this time in, in um, our history. I think it's one of the toughest and one of the most rewarding professions, but it's not a profession that always gets rewarded, um, remunerated fairly. Um, I stand in solidarity right now with the K through 12 teachers who are marching and protesting in West Virginia, in Oklahoma, in Kentucky. Uh, hoping that they can just deserve a dignified wage for, for the important work they do. And I stand with my university colleagues in the UK who you may not know are all on strike right now because their pensions have been cut. Um, the one thing that they thought would reward them for uh, a career of devotion to their students. So I hope for a day when, when all teachers will be honored and I appreciate the fact that, that I've been honored today. I wanna say thank you to my department for nominating me. Um, thank you to Kate McKinley of the Honors and Awards Committee who worked so hard on my Regents Packet, and thank you to my family who are here today. At this time, I'd like to recognize the UMB faculty and staff members for the extraordinary work that was honored by being nominated for a Board of Regents Award this year. If you're here, please stand as I call your name. Dr. Scott Farrow, Professor of Economics. Dr. Carolyn Forcieri, Associate Professor of Political Science. Dr. Thomas Gindling, Professor and Graduate Program Director in Economics. Dr. Wei Dong Zhu, Professor of Mechanical Engineering. And Ms. Ms. Anna Gostin, Business Services Manager for S Facilities Management and Ms. Andrea Lorick, Business Service Specialist for Visual Arts. Please join me in giving them a round of applause. Thank you to all of you. Ms. Jess Myers, Director of the Women's Center, is the recipient of the 2017-2018 Jakubic Family Endowment Staff Award. <laughs> Ms. Myers is committed to diversity and inclusion at UMBC. She has created and developed innovative social justice programs and resources for students, faculty, and staff that target critical issues, including sexual assault, relationship violence, and gender equity. Ms. Myers' work explores social justice in both theory and practice, and she has led many, many meaningful dialogues and poignant teachable moments on our campus. Please join me in welcoming and honoring Ms. Jess Myers. Thank you. It's a true privilege to be here today before you receiving the Jakubic Family Endowment Award. Special gratitude goes to Dr. April Householder for writing such a wonderful nomination letter for me on behalf, on behalf of me and to my mom um, who is here today. <laughs> you are the wind beneath my wings. When I first learned about receiving this honor, I immediately thought about the first time I visited the Women's Center before I even started working at UMBC. In this new place, I felt embraced by safety and comfort. I felt as if I was, I felt as if I was not alone and that, that there was, I was surrounded by the many people who had found home in the Women's Center over its many years of existence there with me. Not even a year later, I was the director of the Women's Center and we were celebrating our 20th anniversary. The theme for the year-long celebration was 100,000 stories, which one is yours? To capture the idea that over the past 20 years, 100,000 individuals had been served by the Women's Center. And that's what I've been thinking about ever since. Perhaps it's not quite 100,000 people who have been a part of my story yet, um, but there have been many, many UMBC colleagues and students who have been a part of my Women's Center story. I would not be here today without the support of so many of you who took me under your wing, who showed me the way, who believed in me, and the vision I had for the Women's Center to grow and stretch to be more rooted in intersectional feminism, anti-racism, critical social justice, and truly support UMPC's vision of inclusive excellence. So to each of you, I see a lot of you over there, Women's Center Advisory Board, um, I, and I hope all of you know who you are, thank you. Working as the director of the Women's Center is a dream job. 
to wake up every day and go to work to support and advance gender equity, to hold space for LGBTQ folks, cultivate healing, for healing space for survivors of sexual violence, to run a scholarship program for older women returning to college, to support that one person in the story of 100,000 in whatever unique and compassionate way they need, that is an award in and of itself. But today feels extra special to be recognized by my UMBC colleagues. Thank you. Mr. Victor Fulda, lab technician for chemical, biochemical, and environmental engineering, is the recipient of the 2017-18 Karen L. Wench Endowment Award for Outstanding Non-Exempt Staff. Oops, there you are. <laughs> Mr. Fulda has consistently gone above and beyond expectations of the faculty, staff, and students in support of education and research. He has worked tirelessly to support chemical, biochemical, and environmental engineering and other departments across the campus with his technical expertise and knowledge as specialized lab equipment expert. Mr. Fulda's creative approach to lab design, coupled with a deep understanding of equipment and fabrication, has saved the departments across the campus thousands of dollars. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating Mr. Victor Fulda. I knew they'd do that. I just want to say I'm extremely honored, very humble in the receiving of this award. I want to thank the Faculty of Chemical and Biochemical Engineering for nominating me. I would also like to thank Dr. Antonio Morera for hiring me 25 years ago. It was, this job has been very rewarding and surprising. And last but not least, I'd like to thank my wife for putting up with my grouchiness when the phone rings at 3 a.m. in the morning and I have to come to UMBC to take care of problems. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dr. Phyllis Robinson, Professor of Biological Sciences, is a recipient of the 2017-2018 Marilyn E. Demarest Award for Faculty Advancement. We are pleased to have Marilyn Demarest with us here today. Marilyn, would you please stand and let us thank you for your continued support. Dr. Robinson is a staunch advocate for women faculty in STEM and a strong supporter of professional growth and tenure for women and underrepresented minorities at UMBC. She is heavily involved in the mentorship of faculty <clears throat> in the biology department and across the campus and has dedicated herself to supporting faculty development and addressing the challenges of women and underrepresented minorities transitioning to full professorship. Please join me in welcoming and honoring Dr. Phyllis Robinson. So last but not least, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for the honor. Uh, and thank Marilyn uh, Demers, Dr. Demers, for establishing this award that incorporates a lot of work that we've done on the advancement of um, initially of women in STEM, and our, our idea was any good idea is good for everyone. And so many of our ideas have been incorporated by the provost uh, to incorporate all, all of you. Um, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Wei Hung Lin in my department for nominating me and for the selection committee for uh, selecting me. It's a great honor. Um, I'd like to acknowledge at this point all the wonderful mentors I've had in my life, and especially the many mentors I've had here at UMBC, uh, including several here on the stage. Um, for me, mentoring is very simple. It is uh, sharing information with people and bestowing guidance and encouragement. Um, and finally, I'd like to end with a uh, few words from the uh, late uh, physicist Stephen Hawking. Um, look at the stars and not down at your feet and be curious. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Phyllis. And now, to my great relief, Dr. Hrabowski will present the university update. <laughs> Would you give Vice Provost McDermott for her great humility? We love her. We really do. We really do. <laughs> She's amazing. Now, before I begin this update, this is such a special day. I want us to give a standing ovation to all of the awardees today. Would you get up and give them a special standing ovation? Very nice. This is a, a special day, and I am to give an update, and I'm going to make it fairly brief because you'll be able to read it, but I just want to highlight a few things. Uh, this ceremony gives us this chance to say that people matter here, and we heard from looking up at the stars, not at your feet, to speaking on behalf of the voiceless and to understanding in this pastoral set setting that we have a responsibility in Baltimore which is reflective and symbolic of so much more in terms of the possibilities of our children from all backgrounds to quantum physics, right? All the way to appreciating that in our own country, <coughs> excuse me, in our own country right now, People are questioning so much of what we do, whether it's our children who are saying to us, shame on us for not keeping them safe, whether in Baltimore City or in schools in all parts of the country, to the disgrace of not paying teachers, of not understanding they have the most noble of profession, K-12 and university professors. And so we do stand united with those groups. It is significant, and in other countries, beyond this country. And so... I want you to think about the fact that this is one of the most exciting times in the history of our institution. And all of my college friends are wondering who is in my body as I show such, such excitement for athletics <laughs> since I didn't go to many games when I was in college or in grad school. Never went to a game at Illinois. But I am now a believer let me say, in many ways. They are, and Phyllis Robinson will appreciate this because she's been a believer in, in, in athletics and academics. But three weeks ago, we did make history. And I love the fact that there are still students on our, on our campus who don't really know what that means. I mean, it's very interesting. Who said, what, what do you mean, 16C? What, what is that about, right? I love hearing that. I really do. I love the fact that we can be just that odd somehow and, and away from popular culture. But the fact is, we made history, and we have every reason to be very proud of our, of our students, of the coaches, of the faculty and staff who work with them. Everybody had heard that we had, we were, we had two students who had 4.0s. Some of you heard the when the reporters asked some of the students what they were going to do, one student said, I'm going back to my room and study. And another student said, we stand on the shoulders of the chess team. Where else would you get that? <laughs> but at UMBC, where else would you get that, right? It never could have occurred to me that we could be on the, on the um, page of Le Keep, the one of the most prestigious journals in France, and that I've had students talk about our being in the news media from Serbia to um, all over the world to the New York Times. And so it is a special time. And this is what makes it so special for us. It is true that we have spent 50 years building the academic enterprise, making this an institution where faculty and staff and students can feel special that we are in this thing together called education and research. But it is true that within two hours, our fate, our identity changed in many ways, and in this way particularly, that the public began to know who we were. Because as much as they may have known in this region, and we know that in our academic circles, whether it is in history circles or in science physics circles, that our colleagues know about us in the disciplines that in the, in the administrative areas people know about us, but the broad public. Most people don't realize two-thirds of American families have never had anyone go to college. And so while we may assume the, the people know us, it was not the case. But the best news of all is that we had prepared well. And so when the New York Times looked at us, or the Washington Post, or the Baltimore Sun, or any others, what they saw when the light was shining on us, when after people said, who is UMBC, they saw substance. They saw gravitas. They saw values. They saw a basketball team that could read well and speak well. And they saw in the audience people from all races, amazingly, unlike the other institutions, not just on the court, 
but among the dancers and the cheerleaders and the alumni and the faculty and the staff, we are so unusual that we don't even realize it, that we are one of the few places, and I'll say it again as a child leader with Dr. King, one of the few places I know in this country that is truly reflective of the dream that people had in the 60s about what might happen in our country as we work for people with people from around the world and people from all backgrounds here. And so this is that special time. It is a time when the people in OIA and across the campus are working to see how do we take advantage of this. So many of our administrators and staff and faculty worked really hard during these weeks to make sure that our brand was one that spoke to academic excellence. Give all those people a round of applause. Yeah, a round of applause. All of them. Greg and then all of you. It's very nice. And it has been amazing to hear faculty and staff complimenting us and realizing it didn't just happen, uh, that we, it could have been very easy that we have won and we'd not have taken advantage, or that people misunderstood who we are. So people do get it. And that's why I think the idea of hearing about everything from what we do for the voice list to quantum physics, that's reflective of who we are as a university. We make history. We made history when we had our first Rhodes Scholar this year. Give Naomi a round of applause for you. And to see that young woman on her way to, to Oxford in nuclear engineering is amazing. And so we have been named again this year by many other publications, and everybody may question the methodology in different publications, but when you make those publications, you talk about it, all right? You make no mistake, whether it's Kiplinger talking about best value or the world in the top 2% of the Times Higher Education World Universities in the top 2%, or all the great accolades for innovation, for excellent teaching among some of the best, best names in the country in higher education. The one that is new, that is really very unusual for us and now takes us to another level is the 2019 U.S. News Best Graduate School Rankings. We have nine of our programs in the top 100. Big deal. Give us a round of applause the top 100 and graduate programs. And so we will use that information as we talk about who we are and where we're going. And it is significant that this is the eighth consecutive year that we're in the Chronicle of Higher Education's list of the best workplaces. People want to work here. It's only one other campus that's gotten on that list, and that's UMB. But we're in that list at 12 categories, and we get the highest marks in, in 11 of the 12 categories. Big round for all of you. Round of applause for all of you. And so we talk about partnerships. You see that everywhere, creative partnerships. As, as Greg Simmons and others come around looking for money from people talking about strategic partnerships and raising money, the Giving Day was a big success. Give it a round of applause, which it was really very nice, <laughs> wonderful. The fact is that we have these partnerships with all of the national agencies from the National Institutes of Health and NSF and at NASA to the National Endowment for the Humanities and many more. I think it is significant particularly that we now are getting more and more grants from the Mellon Foundation, from the Sloan Foundation and everything from diversity and humanities to producing more people in economics who go on to grad school to looking at ways of solving problems and, and that's a part of what I find particularly significant. The grants we're getting to work with Lakeland Elementary. You, you may or may not know only 20% of the children in Baltimore City are coming up to proficiency in math and reading. Only 20%. And the fact that our Sherman scholars and others are working with the teachers, many of whom are graduates of, of UMBC, and that we've gotten that school that is 90% free lunch. 90%. That we've gotten them, the third and fourth graders, up to the state average is a big deal. Give us a round of applause for all of what you're doing. But seeing the partnerships, for example, with the Peabody Conservatory and strengthening music training, uh, or what we do with the Walters Art Gallery and in many other places will show that across the colleges in engineering, in science, in arts, humanities, and social sciences, we are very engaged. Uh, we were very pleased to get a, a renewal of the major grant in space science technology uh, that is for 80 some million, but the 10 year grant, 160 million, half and half, essentially between us and College Park. That's a huge one. Big round of applause for that grant, would you? And I, I was especially pleased with this one that you don't hear a lot about. UMBC has been selected by the American Association for the Advancement of Science to organize an engaging scientist project 
called Dialogue on Science, Ethics, and Religion, a workshop. The intent is for the workshop to serve as a springboard to broaden our culture of inclusive excellence by more deliberately including the sometimes challenging conversations between science and faith. Very special. Give Bill a course round of applause and all the others. Very special. Very, very special. And then we, we always talk about the genius of the and versus the tyranny of the or. This is a place that can talk about academic success from teaching to research and also athletic success. Um, uh, Ryan was just named, Ryan Odom was just named the mid-major coach of the year for the nation. Big round of applause for Ryan Odom. And our own alumnus, Chad Craddock, and his staff, they were named the coaches of the year in swimming for the American East. Big round of applause for them and for the swimming team, men's swimming team. And we had our first academic All-American in men's basketball, first in the, for the entire American East Conference, and the first for UMBC. And uh, Joe Sherburn is 4.0 economics, and he can sing. Give Joe a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> And then when you look at the faculty and staff achievements, and you can go through them, and I'm being careful because there's no way I could name what We'd be here all day. But what struck me was that many of the projects focus on critical issues in our society, such as a five-year grant that focuses on how cells respond to environmental signals at the molecular level, to looking at the um, uh, amazing result of people focused on contaminants in, our, in, our, in the environment, all the way to a major grant from the Whiting Foundation that focuses on public engagement with the special project involving preserving the Baltimore Uprising Project, to another grant that focuses on school safety. Amazing. That, and looking at the role of law, law officers, I mean, major grants from different national agencies. So the point is that our colleagues are looking at the critical issues we face in our society. And they're getting all the grants that we would consider the most prestigious, from the NSF Career Awards to the Guggenheims to the Fulbrights and in, in topics. Here's an interesting one. Go and read it. I mean, this is one that is collaboration with psychologists at the University of Palermo in Sicily to explore Muslim, Tunisian, immigrant, adolescent identity development, okay? Uh, looking at their development, their civic engagement, and positive youth development, and risk behavior engagement. And so for, when looking at projects in this country and around the world, we've got so many faculty focused on all those areas. And then finally, in terms of student achievements, we actually have nominated 16 of our students for Fulbright this year. We expect a lot of them to get it. We just learned yesterday that we received, that we've had nine students given the very prestigious NSF graduate um, uh, fellowships. Big round of applause for all those involved with that. And I purposely not call names. I'm just going to call one name, and it's it, because it is it's such a special achievement, and it is something we need to be highlighting as we talk, think about who we are. And this is a senior dance major, uh, Maya Schechter, and uh, Schechter, yes. And she has a, a piece called Now Elsewhere. But she's been selected to perform at the American College Dance Association National College Dance Festival at the Kennedy Center in June. Give her a round of applause. It's huge. And we've won all kinds of competitions involving mock trial, involving, we were the 2017 cybersecurity champions. Give them a round of applause, those cyber dogs. 2017. Um, some of you know that the basketball team had the privilege and coaching staff and some of us to go and, and um, spend the, the evening with our BFF, the governor somehow, the governor's mansion. And uh, he was very nice to us and was so excited. He was the one who put number one in the brackets, right? Uh, and then the legislature had us there and they gave us a standing ovation. Make no mistake, that athletic success has already resulted in additional funds for the university, millions of dollars from the legislature, because it is what it is when the state gets extra attention because of something like this, uh, it brings the kind of pride and excitement that can make such a difference. Uh, and then going back to the academic side, just a couple of, of, of just uh, our, our, the Surgeon General is a UMBC graduate. Uh, from Mechanicsville, Maryland, came here at 17, and um, he, is, uh, he is making a name for himself and for the country. And he said something very special in talking with Congress. He said, when it comes to life and death, uh, we get above politics. We do the right thing. Give Jerome Adams a round of applause. 
And you know, a year ago we had the Baltimore County and Howard County Teachers of the Year, and then right, right now, the 2017 Washington Post Teacher of the Year. We're very proud of him, Teacher of English, uh, Sean, there in and doing an amazing job. And then I want to highlight uh, a young woman who came here when she was 17, majored in computer science, um, and she is, um, she can move maybe a finger or two at most at most, and she graduated from UMBC um, with a 4.0 in computer science, and she is in the process of completing her PhD um, in uh, computer science and has done superbly. She's been named a Microsoft Fellow and has a Google scholarship, and if you've not seen it, she focuses on the, what she's built, which is a teleoperated mobile robotic prototype that seniors and people with disabilities will be able to control by repositioning their arms and legs. And I think we were all just in awe when uh, Janet Rutledge maybe when we had the PhD completion project and it was the candidacy and she was admitted to candidacy and she came across stage and we congratulated her and she looked out and was able to talk to the audience. Now this is in the robot. She's actually at home in bed, okay? But that robot, where she is, she can look at you, she can talk, um, has been all over the world giving presentations. So she's changing the way we think about disabilities and the ways in which people can be empowered to do more. Give Kavita a round of applause, would you please? Several more things. The athletics facility is, is, again, a new level for us in so many ways, not just in terms of athletics, but the fact that we're bringing commencements all back to campus. We'll have three this year, and people, I'm told, are practicing tomorrow, in fact, getting ready for it. And we want to thank, thank all the people who are involved in commencement. A round of applause, would you? Great. And, and finally, we're getting the money. We've been down to the legislature, and we are, everything looks good. I mean, not be overly confident. It looks good to get the next 60 plus million dollars to keep building the uh, interdisciplinary life sciences building. It looks really good. Keep good thoughts. Let's be humble about this thing, right? You know, we never want to assume we get anything. We'd hate to see a building not quite finished, right? So, you know, so let the record show. I'm saying thank you to the legislature and the governor and uh, especially to Senator Casemeyer and to our alumna, Adrian Jones, Speaker Pro Tem. Give them a round of applause, please. Big round of applause. And finally, you'll be able to read about the budget. We are up to about $456 million, which represents a 3% increase over FY 2018. Without getting into a lot of, of the data, let's just say we were working to get an additional $4 million specifically to the base that moves us towards where we should be in the funding guidelines because we, we deserve to get more money. And it looks good that we're going to get that. And it looks good for all of us, the 2% COLA for faculty and staff that will begin January 2019. Give a round of applause for cola. We need colas. And so I close by saying more people know about us now than ever. Uh, literally 10 times more people around the world know about UMBC, but not just the name, not just the fact that we've got a great um, Chesapeake Bay Retriever, but they know about the, about the substance of the place. Uh, and they know how great a tweeter we have. Give that tweeter a round of applause, would you? <laughs> And I, when Don and others, it's wonderful to hear about, about him taking classes in media and communication studies. That major is going to be booming. There's no doubt about it. Everybody wants to be the tweeter now. It's very clear. But, but this is what I want to say. This is all, whether we talk about today and what it means in our country, whether we talk about speaking for the voiceless, speaking for teachers, or the work we're doing in science to understand the world, it is about values. It's about our dreams and about our values. And I would say this, as we think about hard work and, and grit, that this is a time when, with all the challenges we face, when our students are asking us, has it ever been this bad before? Do you think we're going down the tubes? When I, when I begin to get somewhat emotional about the challenges, the tragedies of the past, what I remember is this. At the darkest moment on this day, 50 years ago, my teachers said to me, but human beings will rise again. And I want you to take that thought that I don't care what's going on that we are not happy with. The fact is that there is something in humanity 
that demands that we be better than we are today. And it's that notion that inspires all of us at UMBC. Thank you all very much. And now, let us rise and stand and sing the alma mater. And please don't leave, please don't leave. We've got to teach students that when the alma mater comes on, everybody stands out of respect for the institution and for ourselves. Please, and you can find it written there in the program. Alma mater, are you MPC, Bully Bad, Green Dog Let's over to see Striving Yeah True Unity Black Gold Forever Remind Death of thee Pride We have to Round of applause for UMBC.